Okay. I hope uh, yesterday's project of lots of straight lines didn't drive you around the bend. Um, it's all part of the design. If it really did drive you crazy and if you're not happy with the results of the um, toffee color stripes, you could paint right over those in just the red and just do the blue diamonds. Um, today we're going to be doing the stenciling part and this gets a lot more fun. It's a lot freer, looser, um, you don't have to have quite as steady a hand and it goes much quicker. So let's have some fun with this. Remember um, throughout these sessions you are welcome to contact me through my blog, ask me questions and then everybody else can see your questions and my answers as well. So um, lots of conversation is good. Everybody learns when everybody asks questions. So let's have some fun and do some stenciling and then we'll have this floor cloth all done. Okay, in with your floor cloth there should have been a clear sheet of plastic and the templates for the stencils. We're going to cut those out using an X-Acto knife and I like to use a metal edge ruler. Just place the ruler against the edge of the diamond and cut firmly with your X-Acto knife. You can use a piece of newspaper underneath if you don't want to cut your table or a cutting mat like I'm showing here. Okay, we're ready to start stenciling. You're going to squirt a little bit of your blue paint onto your paper plate and then use a pouncer brush, which I hope you were able to find at the craft store. It's a foam uh, flat circular brush and it works really well to just daub the paint onto the surface. That way it doesn't seep under the stencil. So I've placed the stencil where I want it on the floor cloth. It's just between the two um, toffee lines that you painted. And then you're just going to dab the blue on, being careful not to press too hard because that would squish the paint out underneath. When you've completely covered the surface, just lift the stencil and you've got a beautiful diamond. Now just place the stencil so that you get the next diamond, dab the paint on, lift it, and replace the stencil. Now you're going to keep going all the way around, leaving the corners blank because you're going to be putting a leaf in the corners, and just carefully placing the stencil each time. Be a little bit careful about putting the stencil down on the wet paint of the previous diamond. I'm just holding the edge up a little bit so it doesn't get wet. When you're all done, it should look like this. Just allow it to dry. <clears throat> now we're going to cut out the leaf stencil. Put your piece of plastic back over the template and line it all up so there's lots of room in between your motifs. And you're going to use your X-Acto knife to cut these edges. Now this one's a little bit trickier because you've got the, the little jagged edges of the leaf, but just take your time and uh, cut it carefully. You will have to go back and make sure that all of the little points are cut so that when you lift the piece out of the stencil you don't tear it. So just work slowly and the whole piece will come out as one unit. Then you can cut the little stem piece as well. Now you're going to use the green paint for the leaf. So you squirt out a blob of the green paint, dab your brush in it, place your stencil, and then dab the paint on. Then carefully lift the stencil. It should look like this when you're done. Allow that to dry. Do all four corners the same way, and then you're ready to go on to the center part. Now you're going to paint your leaves on the center part of the floor cloth. Now I just sort of randomly scattered the leaves around and then I decided that I wanted them to sort of follow in a path. So it's as if I'm walking backwards with my leaves. You can um, go by the template that I'm sending you to try to figure out where these should go or just randomly put your leaves anywhere you want. You could make some kind of an interesting pattern out of it if you like. Show me something different. I love to see what you guys do. The final stencil to cut out is the paw print. So you're just going to cut out the four 
um, pads where the paw where the claws would be, and then the central pad, main pad. These are curvy lines, so just follow with your knife in a nice smooth curve. You don't want it to get all straight edged and jagged. Now you're going to randomly stencil the paw prints on the floor cloth. You can do this any way you like. You can make it look like the dog ran from one side to the other. Just do one uh, path of paw prints. Or you can do it like I've done it and just sort of have them scattered all over the place. Um, you can use your template as a guide or just make your own. Be a little bit careful um, if you get paint on the back side of, of the stencil, it will leave marks outside of the paw print. And where you saw me dab that up on the paper towel, that was just cleaning off the back of the, of the stencil. So just check it every once in a while. If it starts to look jaggedy around the edges, check to make sure that you haven't got paint seeping through on the back. Keep your stencil clean and then you'll have a nice crisp image. And keep stepping back from the floor cloth to see if it's looking the way you want it to. The further away from it you get, the more sense it makes. Keep in mind that it's going to be down on the floor eventually, so you won't be this close to it when you see it. So there it is. You're all done. That wasn't so bad, was it? Um, try doing some different things if you like, or if you totally hate it, remember you could always paint over that yellow part and start over again or do something completely different. Show me what you've done. I'd love to see your work, and I hope you do another project soon. Thanks.